Hello, my name is Rebecca Ravello. What, or should I say who, do Susan Berman, Catherine McCormick, and Morris Black all have in common? That would be the infamous billionaire heir, Robert Durst. Unfortunately, the things that they have in common is that one was shot in the head, one went missing, and one was dismembered. Now, Robert Durst claims his innocence in all these cases, and I'm here to describe a little bit about each one. Now, Robert Durst was from a very wealthy family in New York, the Durst dynasty. They owned a lot of real estate and built some of the biggest skyscrapers. Now, Robert Durst was able to go to the finest schools and also work within the family business. While he was attending school in UCLA, UCLA he met his best friend, Susan Berman. They became very close friends for a long time. Unfortunately, in December 2000, Susan Berman was found shot in the head in her Las Vegas home. The reason why she was found was because there was a note that was mailed to the Beverly Hills Department. And in the note, the word cadaver was written on the note with Susan Berman's address. The police department believed that whoever wrote the note wanted her to be found quickly and most likely knew her. Now, before she passed away, years later, while they were both in college, Robert met his first wife, Catherine McCormick. They fell in love, got married, lived in Westchester, New York, and also in New York City. But unfortunately, the marriage was becoming an unhealthy one. Catherine was becoming scared of Robert. The night she disappeared, she was at a friend's house in Connecticut she even st stated, quoted, saying, I'm scared to go home. I'm scared of what Bobby might do or will do. That night, Robert Durst kept calling and calling, calling her, insisting that she come home. And eventually she did go home. She was scared, but she went home. And that's the night that she was last seen. And the last person to see her was Robert Durst. Um... He claims he has nothing to do with her disappearance to this day. Now, Westchester police, um, before Susan passed away, obviously, wanted to talk to Susan Berman about Catherine McCormick's disappearance. They thought that she would probably have a lot of information that she didn't tell before about her disappearance. And she ended up getting you know shot in the head while she was living in California and coincidentally Robert Durst was in the same vicinity at the same time when Susan got murdered. Coincidence? I don't think so. Now while he was in California and after she was murdered he went back to New York City and then left New York City and went to Galveston, Texas dressed up as a mute woman. Very strange. He didn't want to be recognized. He ended up renting an apartment, befriending his neighbor, Morris Black. Now, Morris Black knew that Robert Durst was Robert Durst. They became friends and spent you know, time together. They had a friendship. Um, now, unfortunately, Morris Black was found dismembered in the Galveston Bay. Robert Durst was not in Galveston at the time when he was found. One thing that wasn't found was Morris Black's head. Um, the reason why Robert Durst got connected with Morris Black and his murder is because he went to Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, he got caught shoplifting. And he caught shoplifting a chicken sandwich and a Band-Aid and a newspaper, all the while having $30, $37,000 cash in his rental car and having more Black's ID. It's almost like he wanted to get caught. Anyway, so they bring him back to Texas and they try and charge him for Morris Black's murder. It, it, Robert Durst claimed self-defense that they were fighting over a gun and the gun accidentally shot Morris in the head. Now, coincidence that the head's missing. 
because they couldn't prove it was self-defense because they didn't have a head, he was acquitted, scot-free. <laughs> so, Morris Black, Susan Berman, and Catherine McCormick. They all knew Robert Durst. And they're all not with us today. Coincidence? No. Now, Robert Durst spent some time in New Orleans. And that's when he was trying to evade police from them trying to charge him with Susan Berman's murder in California. Now, he was staying at the Canal Street Marriott Hotel. And because he was a felon, they arrested him. And he was caught with marijuana and illegal weapons. They believe um, that he was possibly trying to leave the country. Um, now, the New Orleans Police Department wanted him to serve time here in New Orleans. But, and well, also California wanted to have him be extradited back to California so they can charge him with Susan Berman's murder. Well, he ended up serving time here first and then got extradited back to California. Now, while he was here in New Orleans, sometime a little before that, there was a documentary that was being done about him called The Jinx. HBO was doing a series. Morris Black was very excited that this, that this documentary was about him. Uh, he was very anxious to you know, start the project. Well, towards the end of the project, uh, one of the, the last scene, the last interview he has, they mentioned to him that they find a letter that he had written to Susan Berman a long time ago before she was murdered. And they compared it to the note that was written to the Beverly Hills Department. The word Beverly was written incorrectly on both letters, exactly the same way. They wanted Morris Black to see if he could figure out which one he wrote, the one that he that Susan Berman got or the one that the police department got. They put the Beverly's, you know, one on top of the other, one letter on top of the other with the word Beverly being the main focus. And they asked him, can you figure out or do you know which one you wrote? He couldn't. Nope, he could not. Deer in the headlights. He goes to ask the interviewer, can he be excused? He goes to the restroom, not realizing that it's his microphone still on his collar. It's still on. And he says, what did I do? I killed them all, of course.